Um, okay, so as Dr. Mishashik said, the title of today's talk is Therapeutic Potential of Psychedelics. Uh, but I'd like to start out with a picture of Dr. John Mishashik in rare form. <laughs> I was hoping that you'd be introducing me and not Chelsea. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is I want everybody in the auditorium to raise their right hand and to put their right index finger in the air. Everybody do this. It, in order for it to work, everybody's got to do it. Now with that right index figure, I want you to go to your cell phone or pager and put it on stun vibrate so it does not make a noise and distract me. I hate it when that happens. So today, uh, I'm going to go over, first of all, uh, address the topic of what are psychedelics, how do you define the term, uh, what uh, chemicals exactly constitute a psychedelic, uh, what are their pharmacological actions, uh, what is the psychedelic experience like, and what does that consist of, and finally, uh, we'll talk a bit about adverse effects of psychedelics. We'll then talk about the history and prehistory of use of some of the major uh, hallucinogens. Uh, we'll move on to talk about the clinical trials of the 50s and 60s, uh, the age of psychedelic prohibition, and the more recent clinical trials from the 1990s until uh, the present. And then finally, I'll talk about our own research. From the Greek, it literally means mind manifesting or mind revealing. The Oxford English Dictionary defines psychedelic as producing an expansion of consciousness through greater awareness of the senses and emotional feelings and the revealing of unconscious motivations. Psychedelics go by a variety of other uh, terms as well. Uh, the term hallucinogen, psycholytic, psychotomimetic, entheogen, empathogen, and enactogen are also used. Um, which term you use depends on which one you favor and also how you're using the chemical. A more pharmacological definition of psychedelic is any agent that causes alterations in perception, cognition, and mood as its primary psychobiological action in the presence of an otherwise clear sensorium. Uh, the chemical families which constitute in psychedelics are five main families. Uh, the tryptamines fall into the bigger family of the indole alkylamines, and the tryptamines include DMT, psilocin, psilocybin, and the active ingredient in bufo toad venom, which is 5-methoxy-DMT. Uh, the next family is the ergolines, which includes LSD and its natural and synthetic analogs. Uh, the next group is the beta-carbolines, which include harmaline, which is one of the active ingredients in ayahuasca. Uh, the phenethylamines include mescaline, which is the active ingredient in peyote. And finally, we have the phenyl isopropylamines, which uh, includes DOM, which was uh, popular back in the 60s, also known as STP. Today, we're going to talk about psilocybin, LSD, and mescaline, because these are the most widely used psychedelics, and we have the most clinical and research experience with them. I'm not going to talk about MDMA or ecstasy because that is an entire lecture unto itself and uh, would make this lecture go way too long. Uh, this slide should give some of you flashbacks to organic chemistry, but what we're looking at here is uh, the, uh, the chemical structure of serotonin, which is one of the endogenous neurotransmitters. This is the chemical structure of psilocybin, and if you look, it's not hard to see uh, the, homolo uh, the homology between the two chemicals. If you squint your eyes a little bit, you can look at mescaline and see you know, the same six carbon ring with uh, the branching chain. And if you squint really hard and look at LSD, you can see the homology as well. So all of these uh, drugs that we're talking about are potent agonists at the serotonin 2A, 2C receptors. Uh, the initial response after ingestion is that of sympathetic arousal followed by the actual psychedelic experience. Uh, the effects of most of these drugs last anywhere from 4 to 12 hours, with the exception of DMT, which lasts about 30 minutes. 5-methoxy-DMT uh, lasts even shorter, about 10 to 15 minutes uh, for the peak experience. All of these drugs exhibit tolerance and cross-tolerance. Uh, there are no withdrawal symptoms, and there's no evidence of physical dependence. There have been no deaths uh, recorded due to the direct physiological effects of these drugs, even in accidental massive overdoses. Um, 
also it's interesting to note that chronic use of some antidepressants, including SSRIs and tricyclics, uh, blunts or reduces the psychedelic effect of these chemicals. So, as I said, the initial somatic reactions, uh, you know, within 10 to 30 minutes post-ingestion include uh, these sympathomimetic signs and symptoms. I won't read those aloud. You can see them there. Uh, also, we notice insomnia uh, with REM rebound the evening after the psychedelic experience. Now, when we talk about the psychedelic experience itself, that experience is the product of a complex interaction of the drug and the person's external environment and their internal state. Uh, we talk a lot in psychedelic research and in psychedelic literature about set and set setting, where set is the person's internal frame, their personality structure, which tends to be a trait variable, one that is uh, long-lasting over time, and how they are now or their state of being, you know, uh, those variables that tend to fluctuate hour to hour, day to day. And uh, what's interesting to note that is that in the psychedelic experience, um, what we see change is not only a person's state variables, but there's also potential to change the more longer lasting and harder to change traits. A person's set uh, all also consists of their previous experiences with psychedelic drugs and their current intention of use, what they want to get out of uh, the psychedelic experience when they're going into it. The setting is the external frame. It includes the physical environment, uh, the social or interpersonal milieu, uh, the atmosphere or ambience that is set uh, in, in the physical environment, and also the expectations of any other people who might be around. So you have the physiological effects of the drug, plus the set, plus the setting that gives you the psychedelic experience. That experience can be um, divided into five main categories of effects. Uh, that of mood and affect, interpersonal behavior, sensory and perceptual effects, intellectual function and reality testing, and intuitive effects. Uh, first of all, talking about mood and affect, uh, psychedelics cause a lability of affect and typically an increased intensity of emotions. Uh, a lot of users will describe a sense of well-being, anything from what mild euphoria to uh, very strong feelings of omnipotence. Um, we also see an increase or decrease in the level of anxiety, which can coexist. An increase in anxiety can coexist with the feelings of euphoria and om omnipotence. Um, there's an increased concern with immediate events and sensations and a marked lack of concern for things in the future and past. Um, I'm going to be switching back and forth between describing these categories and then describing what we've seen in our subjects thus far. Um, thus far, all of our subjects here at the university, um, four of them thus far, have uh, endorsed increased intensity of their emotions and have had states of euphoria at some point during their four uh, sessions that they've had with us. Uh, the second realm is that of interpersonal behavior. Uh, psychedelics cause increased sensitivity to interactions with others, which leads either to their being very easily hurt, feeling neglected or rejected, uh, and or they feel an enhanced connection to the people around them. Uh, thus, the term empathogenic is sometimes used to describe these compounds. Um, and all of our subjects, again, endorsed at some point in time a sense of closeness, not only to the sitters who were sitting in the room with them, but also immediately after the experience when they went to our inpatient ward, they had a sense of closeness, a sense of empathy with staff, nurses, and, um, and other patients on the ward. Now, the sensory and perceptual effects are those that uh, a, a big deal is made of uh, for many people. Uh, psychedelics cause an increased sensitivity to existing sensory stimuli. Uh, they cause uh, illusions and hallucinations and other perceptual distortions. Um, one of the most remarkable uh, type of perceptual distortion is that of synesthesias, which is crossover of sensory modalities. So psychedelics cause people to taste music or to hear colors, or see music, taste colors. And there's also a profound change in 
one sense of time. Time seems to stop, seems to go backwards, seems to speed forward. Um, time takes on a very dreamlike quality when one is in the psychedelic uh, experience.